Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. This program is about becoming wealthy and retiring in 10 years, rather than 40 years, as the traditional route. At first glance, the title may appear to be a stretch, but MJ DeMarco shares hard-earned business wisdom gleaned from his millions of dollar success as a result of his creation of a limousine reservation website. But what if there was a better way? We've been told to go to school, get a degree, get a good job, work hard, and save money so that we can finally retire in our 60s. What if there was a way for us to arrive at our final destination much more quickly? This book promises to teach us how to do it. As a group, we'll see if it lives up to the promise made in the title. Many people may see the title of this book and immediately think scam. That is completely understandable. Many people who read and reviewed this book online stated that the title was off putting to them, but that underneath the cover, the book contained some excellent advice. MJ DeMarco, unlike many other success or motivational gurus, did not become wealthy by selling books about success or $1,000 motivational seminars. He automatically rises above many other authors in this genre, in my opinion. Who is MJ DeMarco, and what is his background? The author, entrepreneur, and investor MJ DeMarco has a diverse background. His current occupation is that of administrator of the popular entrepreneur community known as the Fast Lane Forum. He resides in a large house in the Arizona mountains and enjoys driving exotic sports cars for recreation. DeMarco, on the other hand, was not born wealthy. When he was a child, he went to the ice cream shop and was surprised to see his dream car parked in front of the store. A car owner, who appeared to be no more than 30 years old, was approached and asked his occupation. A young DeMarco was inspired by the response of the stranger, who explained that he was an inventor. After graduating from Northern Illinois University with two degrees, DeMarco spent a few years living with his mother and pursuing various business opportunities, including a few multi-level marketing schemes. Aside from being a pizza delivery boy and a limousine driver, he had a number of miserable jobs. But one day, while working as a limousine driver, he had an inspiration that would make him rich. He was depressed and had almost given up hope. Several customers have inquired about limousine services in various cities, and one of them has requested that he recommend some. Many other people, DeMarco Reason, must have similar questions and be searching online for the answer. He therefore developed a website to assist people in finding limousine services in any city. The following year, he developed a system for selling the leads generated by website visitors to limousine businesses. In a decade's time, he developed this website and built it up into a highly profitable company. The company eventually went into liquidation and he was able to retire at the age of 37. Many years later, he wrote The Millionaire Fast Lane to assist others in following a similar path to his. So let's start with the most important lesson of all. Don't take the fast lane, there are numerous issues with the path that society instructs us to take. So, what is the compass that we use to navigate through our days? According to MJ DeMarco, it all boils down to the roadmap that we're currently on. Our lifetime financial strategy, as well as the important beliefs we hold about money, debt, education, time, and other topics are all referred to as our roadmap. Generally speaking, there are three main roadmaps that people adhere to, the sidewalk, slow lane, and fast lane. Let's take them one at a time and talk about them. On the street, there is a sidewalk. Rather than looking to the future, the sidewalk is focused on the here and now. Consumption, pleasure, consumerism, gadgets, fashion, trips, flashy objects and endless entertainment are all examples of how we spend our money as soon as it comes into our possession. Consequently, People living on the sidewalk are often forced to live from paycheck to paycheck, and they have a significant amount of debt to contend with as well. It is not always necessary to be on the street to be poor to be on the sidewalk. People with extremely high incomes can also find themselves living on the streets if they spend more than they earn. Because of this, it is not uncommon to hear about famous people going bankrupt only a few years after they appeared to be on top of the world. A slow lane is one in which you drive slowly. While in the slow lane, you make sacrifices for the sake of the future. For example, reading personal finance books, putting away 10% of our paycheck, investing in various funds, earning compound interest, and so forth. We are told that this is the best course of action by the majority of our society, including parents, teachers, and financial experts. The sidewalk, on the other hand, is a far better option. A lifetime in the slow lane is a generation. Our lives are shaped by this roadmap, which includes spending the majority of our time saving money, 
clipping coupons, and avoiding lattes in order to retire one day. Our age and baldness will most likely have advanced to the point where we will require assistance. So this isn't quite what we had hoped for, is it? The slow one isn't always a safe bet to be taken. There are no guarantees in this path, even though it is sold to us as the safest. This strategy can be easily derailed by a variety of unanticipated but common life events such as health crises, divorce, stock market crashes, children, and so on. When it comes to slow lend gurus, they don't follow their own advice. Even though we are taught this strategy by financial experts and authors, they themselves do not rely on it to build their own personal fortunes. Instead, they make their fortunes through the sale of books, courses, seminars, radio shows, and other similar products and services. This is ironic, isn't it? The fast lane, also known as the express lane. Getting a business off the ground is the focus of fast lane. Most people who have become wealthy while still in their 20s did so through the establishment of a business. Unless you are one of the extremely talented or famous, owning a business gives you complete control over your income and the potential to earn significantly more than most annual salaries. The fast lane is all about retiring while you're still able to enjoy yourself fully at the time. Though money cannot buy happiness, it can assist us in obtaining the things that do, like freedom, health, and relationships, that do bring us happiness. Getting rich quickly is not the goal of the fast lane, but it can be achieved relatively quickly. For those who believe quick means less than 10 years, this is the case. The first year of MJ DeMarco's business was spent working 12-hour days, 7 days a week. His ability to work decreased over time and eventually fell to just several hours per week after several years of struggle. 2. Instead of consuming, produce something that is value for the rest of humanity. Considering life from the standpoint of a consumer, the majority of people are completely unaware of the fast lane roadmap. When you buy products and services, you don't have to think about where they came from or how they got there in the first place. The transition from consumer to producer is necessary for the start of a successful business. In this case, consider the following. Instead of just reading the recipe on a food website, take note of how they make money next time you visit. Advertising, affiliate links, or the sale of their own cookbooks are some of the methods they use to generate income. Take note of the marketing funnel the next time you buy some razors online. What is the layout of their shopping cart? Do they have any coupons or subscription plans available to customers? Consider this the next time you're at Starbucks purchasing a latte, what kind of system do they use to keep everything organized behind the scenes? How does the company hire and manage such a large number of individuals? What method do they use to place orders for materials? Finally, we will have to shift our actions away from consumption and toward creation. The following is what DeMarco has to say. If this is implemented, it means that instead of purchasing products on television, you should sell them. Make money selling shovels instead of gold. Consider teaching a class instead of enrolling in one. As an alternative to borrowing money, you could lend it instead. Choose to hire for positions rather than accepting employment. Keep your mortgage instead of taking out a new one. Escape from the world of consumerism and reorient yourself to the world as a producer. Work the process, getting wealthy is not a one-time event. It takes time and a series of steps to achieve financial success and stability. Because they present the idea of becoming wealthy as an event, get-rich-quick schemes are popular. For lack of a better phrase, they tell us that we can achieve success by doing this one thing. In every case, it's tied to a topic that's fresh and exciting to people at the time. Buying real estate with no money down or investing in tech stocks during the dot-com bubble were popular 20 years ago. Making money blogging or advertising on Facebook was commonplace five years ago. These days, it could be anything from purchasing Bitcoin to drop shipping items on Amazon. A profitable business, on the other hand, is a multi-step process rather than an event that occurs once. It's not the same as winning the lottery, rather, it's more like building a house from the ground up, block by block, from the inside out. In most cases, this involves years of tedious work and risk-taking. Taking DeMarco as an example, he devoted hundreds of hours to reading dry books about website programming. In his own process, it was a crucial step forward. He wouldn't have been able to become wealthy without taking this precaution. In addition, even after his website began to generate revenue, he continued to learn new technologies in order to improve it and expand his company's reach even more. It's all about the process. 4. Starting a business on the basis of control, entry, need, time, and scale are the five commandments of DeMarco's law. In order to start a business that has the potential to make you wealthy, you must first identify a business that has that potential. It appears to be self-explanatory. Despite this, 
Many people start businesses that place them in a worse position than a 9 to 5 job. These individuals put in longer hours, deal with increased stress, and have no plans to expand their operations in the future. Thus, DeMarco devised five commandments that can be used to assess the viability of an investment opportunity. Consider each of them in turn, starting with the most recent. Commandment number one, exercise authority. Organization, product, and pricing must all be under your control. A business isn't really a business unless you do all of these things. More accurately, your business has been integrated into someone else's. This leaves you vulnerable to their future decisions, which means that they could easily change some part of the contract and completely demolish everything you've worked so hard to accomplish so far. Many so-called business opportunities do not give you the ability to control your own destiny or financial future. Multi-level marketing, MLM, affiliate marketing, and dropshipping products are examples of this type of business model. The answer is yes, some people who follow these strategies are able to earn a good living. They do, however, make significantly less money than those who start an MLM company, run an affiliate program, or recruit others to drop ship their products. Commandment number two, the commandment of admission. A high barrier to entry is required when starting a business. Thus, a number of time-consuming and complicated steps are required to get the company up and running. Example, Mark Zuckerberg wrote the code for Facebook from the beginning. The fact that only a minority of the population can code immediately creates a barrier to entry. When a type of business appears to be simple to start, a large number of people rush to get involved. The easy business types, on the other hand, become extremely competitive as a result of this phenomenon. You must be truly exceptional in order to get ahead of all of the other newcomers who are doing exactly the same thing as you are doing. This could include currency trading, making money through Amazon and other avenues at this time. In the third place, there's the commandment of need. Entrepreneurs who succeed do so by identifying a need in the marketplace and filling it. Service is their primary focus. What you are passionate about will be ignored by the majority of people. For solutions to their problems, they are willing to spend money. Everyone is preoccupied with the question of what's in it for me? Business failure is most often caused by entrepreneurs who start businesses for their own selfish and narcissistic reasons. While it is true that we frequently hear advice along the lines of do what you love and the money will follow, this is simply not true in this case. People are interested in what your company can do for them, not just what you sell. What exactly will it do to assist them? What chance does it have of resolving their issue? Streamline their daily routine? Is it possible to provide them with shelter? Conserve their funds, if possible. Is it possible to educate them? Instill some sort of emotion in them. Describe your business and explain to me why on God's green earth I should provide you with money. To what extent do you contribute to the quality of my life? In order to be a successful producer, you must be willing to let go of your own selfishness and confront the selfishness of others. In the fourth category, there is the commandment of time. We must separate our income from our time if we are to achieve financial independence. Making business systems that can run independently of us is essential. MJ DeMarco achieved this after a few years in the limousine website business. He did so by automating and systematizing all of the business's processes. The majority of people are compensated based on the amount of time they put in at their jobs. They will not receive any income if they do not work today. Due to the fact that their businesses require them to be present at all times in order to function, Many business owners find themselves in the same situation over and over. Aspect 5, The Scales of Justice. Invest in a company that has the potential to become very successful. To maximize your earnings, reach as many customers as possible with your business. Owning a single local coffee shop or sandwich restaurant will not make you wealthy because there is a logical limit to the number of customers you can serve on a given daily basis. For growth potential, the internet is excellent, unless you plan on opening multiple locations. This is because you have access to a global market from the very beginning of your business's operation. 5. Having a positive impact on millions of people increases your earnings. Those who have a significant impact on people's lives on a large scale or with great magnitude are able to accumulate millions and billions of dollars. The law of affection, as MJ DeMarco refers to it. A large number of people are affected by something on a grander scale. Consider the case of Stephen King who became a millionaire after selling millions of $10 books. Having a significant impact on people's lives means being of great magnitude. To give an example, a local condo developer sells 100 condos at a cost of $300,000 per unit. In addition to making a million dollars, he has a significant impact on a small number of people. Growing your company's impact at a larger scale and or greater magnitude is the goal when building a successful venture.
it's all neatly summarized in DeMarco's profit equation, which goes as follows. Total net profit is equal to units sold, scale, minus unit profit, magnitude. With his website expanding, DeMarco's number one priority was to raise both the number of units sold as well as the profit per unit sold on the right. Your ability to influence both is limited to a certain degree. Increased sales units could be achieved by increasing the number of visitors to his website or increasing the conversion rate of visitors into buyers, for example. How? For his part, he was busy learning new web technologies, such as search engine optimization, and experimenting with different website designs. 6. Increase the number of money trees in your yard, your business must be able to run without you. Your earnings must be distinguished from the time you spend on the job. Creating business systems that can function without your constant presence will allow you to accomplish this goal effectively and efficiently. Business types that are well suited for this, according to MJ DeMarco, are as follows. Rent-based businesses, these include real estate, licensing your ideas, and earning royalties from books, music, and other media, among other activities. Those involved in the computer and software industries, this includes blogs, communities and e-commerce as well as advertising, subscriptions and applications, among other things. The internet has made it easier than ever before for people to start their own content businesses. You will be able to benefit from your content for years after it has been published online. Products are distributed through a variety of businesses, including Amazon, retail, and franchises. As important as creating a product is getting it in front of the right audience. Entrepreneurship run by employees, managing a large number of employees can become time-consuming. The fact that DeMarco was forced to sell his company was one of the primary reasons for this. To sum it up, there's nothing better than cash to grow on. The only true passive income comes from interest earned on your savings and investments. In this way, even in his 30s, DeMarco was able to achieve his dream of retiring. After successfully selling his company for millions of dollars, he reinvested the proceeds and is now reaping the rewards. For example, if someone saved $1 million and earned 4% interest on it, they would earn $40,000 per year doing absolutely nothing. 7. It is not necessary to come up with an entirely new concept to improve execution. In the beginning, MJ DeMarco was excited about the prospect of creating a limousine website. A quick search on the internet revealed that a dozen other people had already done so. Almost giving up, he received some excellent advice from a friend. This is a common experience for most aspiring entrepreneurs. No matter what you do, she stated that there will always be competition, therefore, do it better than the rest. Therefore, he acted in this manner. His website was able to outperform all of the competition due to its excellent execution. The ability to innovate also allowed him to stay one step ahead of new competitors, despite the fact that they were trying to replicate everything he did. An old idea is refined and improved upon by great businesses. Many search engines existed prior to Google's introduction. The existence of numerous social networks existed prior to Facebook. There was no shortage of coffee shops in the years before Starbucks came along. People's needs were better met when they took those old ideas and reworked them into something new. For better execution, consider the following three suggestions. One project at a time requires your complete dedication to it. The result of spreading one's resources across multiple business ideas is that one does none of them particularly well. The term monogamy over polygamy is used by DeMarco to describe this situation. Maintain a record of all customer grievances if they occur. The majority of business owners simply want complaints to go away, but they can be a gold mine if handled correctly and efficiently. A large number of new ideas that can help you improve and stay ahead of the competition can come from your customers. Figure out what makes you different from the crowd, USP. When asked, why should they choose you over your competitors, respond in this manner. You will be forced to compete by lowering your prices if you do not offer something different, special, or unique which is bad. Consider Domino's Pizza, which rose to prominence quickly thanks to its unique promise that their pizza would be delivered within 30 minutes or less, or it's free. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.